On this anniversary weekend, let's be clear about one thing from the start. It didn't begin with us. It never does. It began as it always does, with a lavish gardener. This gardener broadcast seed with wild abandon all over a vast territory. He scattered seeds of longing for God, for community, for a purposeful life. She scattered seeds of the peace of Christ, knowing that some would fall onto fertile soil and some on the garden paths or on rock formations or amidst a confusion of weeds. Year after year, century after century, the gardener kept on scattering seeds. Almost 500 years ago, an Anabaptist section of God's garden sprung up. Almost 100 years ago, three historic branches of Amish and Mennonites found themselves living side by side here in southwestern Ontario. And in this corner of the garden, God kept on planting seeds, seeds of peacemaking, hospitality, and cooperation long before anyone imagined MCEC. During World War II, God planted seeds of understanding as Mennonite and Amish young men served together in forestry and road building. After the war, God planted seeds of common purpose as women mingled to sow clothes for relief. In the 1950s, God planted seeds of cooperation as business and church leaders looked at a farmer's field and imagined Conrad Grable College. In the 1970s and 80s, God planted seeds of hospitality as churches shared worship space with immigrants from Asia and Central America. 40, maybe 50 years ago, God planted seeds of visionary persistence in certain leaders. They dared to believe that we could set aside our differences to unite behind God's mission. And they kept the dream alive through some heartbreaking setbacks until the time was right. Nelson Shifley, one of those leaders, and he's here tonight, said, God prepared the soil carefully and over the years planted many integrating seeds and nurtured their growth with the gentle rains and the warmth of common experience. And so, 25 years ago, Mennonite Conference of Eastern Canada met for our first annual session. Back home in our churches, we worshiped in English, German, French, Spanish, Hmong, Lao, and Cantonese. And there in a Mennonite high school gym in Leamington, hundreds of us sang new words to an old tune with enthusiasm. still feel the energy and the wonder of that day. And the new creation called MCEC quickly became my spiritual home. Over the years, I've reveled in seeds scattered and sown. I've delighted in shoots springing up in places expected and unexpected. And I've marveled as growth has taken beautiful and sometimes surprising forms. I give thanks for all whose persistent faithfulness enabled God to form MCEC and for all who have labored here as gardeners with God. And I'm tempted to spend the rest of this reflection saying, 
Oh yes, the gardener's seed has sure fulfilled its promise. Surely we've produced 30-fold, 60-fold, maybe 100-fold. But I'm far too enmeshed with MCEC to make any such pronouncements. <laughs> and anyway, that's the job of historians 50 years from now. What I can do is give thanks for what I observe from my vantage point within the garden. So this evening, I want to give thanks for five simple gifts God has showered on our tiny corner of the Anabaptist Christian plot in God's huge garden. I believe these gifts taken together have helped shape our identity and fostered our calling these 25 years. And as I give thanks, I'll name some seeds that God just may be planting in us now. So here goes. First, I thank God for a new spiritual thirst, a new yearning for God among us. I suspect many of us connect with these words from the psalmist. Oh God, you are my God whom I seek. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you, as in a dry and weary land where no water is. So why would I call our spiritual thirst a gift? And why would I put it first? I put it first because of our place in the parable. In the parable, we are the soil that receives the seed scattered by God. We can only extend the peace of Jesus when the seed is rooted deeply in us, when the soil of our hearts is softened by God's grace and nourished by God's spirit. I call our thirst for God a gift because it has led us to seek God anew in the postmodern world we increasingly inhabit. We are allowing God to tend our souls and our congregation's souls in ways that bring renewal. We are disciples made not only once, but disciples continuously reshaped for God's mission in 2013 and beyond. And out of our own searching, perhaps God is planting in us seeds of compassion Compassion for our society, which prizes so many things, yet remains so very thirsty. Perhaps God is planting in us seeds of compassion. Secondly, I thank God for our diverse Anabaptist beauty here in MCEC. Many of us have been intrigued by the notion of the naked Anabaptist, and sometimes that's interpreted Let's just get rid of our Mennonite cultural trappings and strip Anabaptism down to its core so we can be more missional. Well, maybe. But I'd rather meet 12 Anabaptists variously clothed than one naked one. <laughs> what I'd like to do is explore Anabaptism clothed in many cultures and ethnicities. And this opportunity, I believe, is an amazing gift of God to us in MCEC. A surprise for me is that churches already formed, shoots already thriving, are now coming to us, asking to be transplanted into Anabaptist soil. Perhaps this is one fruit of the seeds of, hospita of hospitality God planted in us 35 years ago when so many of our churches sponsored refugees. Perhaps God is now planting seeds of reciprocity in us as we relearn Anabaptism together. I have so much to learn from persons embracing the peace of Christ who have fled countries at war. I have so much to learn from persons joining our churches who have grown up right here, but without a Christian memory. And as much as I love my own church's Christmas pageant, 
Sometime I'd really like to see the nativity presented Bollywood style by those Tamil dancers in Markham. Perhaps God is planting seeds of reciprocity in us as we relearn Christian faith in the Anabaptist mode together. Thirdly, I thank God for our eclectic pool of pastoral leaders suited to renewing our diverse garden. As MCEC began, we could count the number of ordained female pastors on our two hands. And early on, we thought it downright exciting when a Russian Mennonite pastor was called to serve an Amish Mennonite church, and some even wondered whether such a thing could work. Now we have a Mennonite pastor from the Global South serving a mostly Caucasian congregation in MCEC. And we are host to a rich cross-fertilization as pastors who did not grow up Mennonite seek out MCEC as a place to serve. Increasingly, we are seeing Anabaptism with an evangelical tinge or a liturgical tinge or a Pentecostal tinge as well as a traditional Mennonite tinge. A special delight for me are the younger pastors God is giving us. As I've had the privilege to coach some of them, my hope for our future has soared. Through our younger and our mid-career pastors, I'm learning new ways of listening for God's spirit with my inner ears even as my physical hearing is starting to go. I believe God is planting seeds in us through our remarkable pool of pastors, seeds of engaging our postmodern world in renewed ways. Fourthly, then, I thank God for the gift of seeing our communities with renewed vision. I think we are growing into how to be differently in our communities. I believe God is planting in us seeds of resourcefulness and caring. As gardeners with God, many of us now sow the seed in urban ways. And the beauty that emerges is akin to the beauty of balcony gardens or community garden plots or neighborhood parkettes. Or if we are rural people, perhaps we're drawing on our barn raising tradition in new ways. Whatever our setting, I believe God is planting in us seeds of caring, caring about the health of our neighborhoods where God is already at work. Maybe we sponsor a fall festival or an evening of games in the park as a welcoming place for our neighbors to gather. Perhaps we band together to make a parish nurse available in our rural area. Perhaps we include in our building an art gallery for our city core. Maybe we commission hockey coaches to go out into our community. I believe God is planting in us new seeds of resourcefulness and caring. Finally, I thank God for the gift of new growth after pruning and for the gift of hope after loss. I like to imagine congregations as containers holding out God's grace and peace, blossoming and bearing fruit in a particular way for a particular time and place. The ways we develop of doing things are not necessarily forever, for our communities change and we change. And so over the past 25 years, many of us have had to give up some cherished traditions or some familiar ways of doing things. And some of us have made the painful decision to close a congregation. Yet we know that in the organic cycle, seeds are produced at the end of a growing season, hidden away in the fruit or the flower. As the lowly dandelion flower dies, the wind scatters its seed lavishly, unpredictably, and the plant's roots are deep. Oh my, are they deep. We also know 
that if seed falls on a path or in a rocky place and does not germinate, birds may well eat it, eventually fertilizing the earth anew. In times of unrealized expectations, in times of loss and change, I believe God is with us, tending our deep roots, planting in us seeds of resilience and hope, inviting us to participate in God's mission anew. I celebrate these 25 years of MCEC as a sturdy but flexible container giving shape, leadership, and interpretation to the gifts God gives us. Welcoming synergies with schools, camps, spiritual directors, church consultants, our national church, MCC, and many other ministry partners. MCEC and its partners have encouraged our formation as disciples of all ages. MCEC and its partners have fostered diverse Anabaptist beauty and gathered and tended our eclectic mix of leaders. MCEC and its partners have helped us see our communities with renewed vision and invited us into God's mission again and again. I celebrate the seed God has planted in us these 25 years and continues to plant in us. Seeds of compassion, resilience, and hope. Seeds of reciprocity in the midst of our diverse Anabaptist beauty. Seeds of resourcefulness as we engage our community. Seeds of listening for God in new ways. 25 years in, I believe we are still God's new creation. In fact, we always are. For God always calls us to receive the good seed within ourselves and to sow it lavishly, non-anxiously, just like the gardener. And so tonight I say, thanks be to God. And I pray with the Apostle Paul, now to the one who by the power at work within us is able to do abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. I invite you now to take a few moments to consider how you would finish the statements coming up on the screen as the music plays, the statements. God has been planting in me a seed of, God has been planting in my congregation a seed of. God has been surprising us in MCEC by. Barb, what are you hearing? Well, I, I was hearing a lot and then getting really into the story, so I didn't really keep moving too much. <laughs> um, I heard that God was planting seeds of thanksgiving. Uh, that the Chin Church, there are four Chin Mennonite churches in Canada now, and, and just rejoicing uh, at that. I heard a pastor say, that God is planting within her a seed of patience and nurture as she grows into her calling and even more than that, learns that it's about her being faithful to the moment and to what God is, God is calling her to rather than needing to control and know everything that's going on. Okay. And Peter, what are you hearing? All right. Oh, is this on? Okay. Oh, I was kind of wandering around there, but I've heard lots of very different um, answers. Um, seeds of creativity mm -hmm. within the church, um, you know, changing styles of worship within the congregation, mm -hmm. and uh, some seeds that are um, growing a lot faster in the congregation than um, 
they thought. Okay. And uh, just, you know, seeds of bringing uh, the young and the old together um, mm. in worship services. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Now, uh, can we have the next slide? Okay. Next question. God has been surprising us in MCEC by. Let's God has been surprising us in MCEC by. Barb, what have you heard? We've been surprised by the diversity of God's garden called Mennonite Church, Eastern Canada. We have been surprised by uh, how drawn Mennonites have become and the thirst we've had for gifts within the churches of our brothers and sisters of other Christian traditions. We've been surprised by how deep within our own Mennonite church we're delving into spiritual direction and soul tending. Uh, and mostly, we've been surprised and grateful that God's got it all and that there's an ebb and flow of the Spirit as things renew and get quiet and renew again. Okay, and Peter, what have you heard? All right. Um, I've heard, um, well, since, since the last question, seeds being planted in the churches about um, services changing in the congregations. So people have been surprised by um, how open the MCC has been um, within the churches, how the services have been changing and how open they are to mm -hmm. um, new ideas. Okay. Um, another group was... Um, this is a funny one, but um, how long, uh, they were surprised at how long the two MCEC buildings have stood for. <laughs> how long they've been there for. And uh, another uh, group was talking about um, the Chin Church and how um, MCEC has helped them um, to be uh, part of the Anabaptist Church. And now they want to go back to, to Burma to spread the word to people there to, um, to join in on the Anabaptist Church. So I think that's something really wonderful. Okay, yeah. thank you. Well, this is something I hope we can keep talking about informally over the weekend.